what mm-hmm. Neil Armstrong was really like. Uh, yeah, the first time I met him, and he was a huge hero. I just, my, you know, my biggest hero. And and uh, it, I think it really is hard to to understand that how, what a big deal it was when they landed on the moon. It really, you know, I was very, I feel very fortunate that I was young enough, old enough uh, to remember it, but young enough that I can still remember it. <laughs> you know, it didn't happen. Yeah. It happened to me at a very early age. I was one of the very first things I remember was, was the moon, the Apollo program guys going to the moon and low walking on the moon in 1969. And, and uh, it was, it was huge. I mean, it's, so this guy to me, and I was a little impressionable kid, and I was like, this is what you want to be when you grow up. You want to be Neil Armstrong, not just an astronaut, but you want to be this guy. And I never really thought of, you know, I never really knew what he was like. You know, I had maybe heard some things, but, but uh, you know, to meet someone who is that big of a hero, you know, what was he going to be like? And when he came to speak to my astronaut class in our very first week as astronauts, uh, he came to, to talk to us and... Uh, he wasn't living in Houston any longer. He was, you know, I think at that time living in Cincinnati or somewhere in Ohio and he was teaching at the University of Cincinnati maybe, but I, I think that's kind of where he lived. But anyway, he came to Houston and uh, to talk to us and um, he was v- like very shy and almost um, like almost a reluctant hero. You know, he was, he uh, didn't even, when he addressed us, he didn't even talk about the moon. He talked about test flying the X-15 and what that was like. He really loved the flying and the engineering behind it. And um, and then when we went to the questions and answers, we asked him about the moon. You know, we got to ask these questions about what was it like or whatever we wanted to say. And and uh, but he was certainly very very humble. And then when I, the next day, I end up being online next to him on, for lunch. Can you imagine? So uh, so I I got I got to say something to him. You know that I didn't get a chance to ask him a question back then but uh you know when i first met him when he when he addressed my class but i asked him you know what did he say when he how did he come up with what i knew what he said he said one small step for man one giant leap for mankind but i asked him how did he come up with that because as a little kid when i heard that i was like holy cow this is amazing how'd you come up with that you know did your wife tell you to say that did you hire a publicist what happened here and he looks at me kind of like strangely he says mike i didn't i didn't think about what i was going to say on the moon until after i landed on the moon I was like, really? And he went on to say that if I never landed on the moon, Mike, there'd be no reason to say anything. And then he went on to say, you know, what you're dealing with here, Mike, you're new to this. I was a civilian coming into NASA, was only there a couple days, right? And he said, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you've gotten yourself involved in a dangerous business and uh, serious, and you need to take the job seriously. And if you get distracted by all this public relations stuff and all that kind of thing, you you know, bad things are going to happen. You got to, stick to your job and do your job and not worry about that other stuff. And so I thought that was really good advice. And then when I was asked to send the first tweet from space, I, uh, you're talking about your social media people. Uh, I was going to, I was asked to do that by NASA and I said, yeah, sure. And then I was asked in a press conference right before the flight, what was I going to, as I, as I thought about what I was going to tweet and I, you know, I channeled Neil Armstrong and said, I'm not worrying about that. We got to get to space first. I'll worry about that after we get to space. But then I found out when, when I opened my computer, that wasn't very good advice, I thought, because I couldn't think of a thing. And uh, I just sent, I said launch was awesome and the adventure of a lifetime has begun or something like that. And then I got made fun of on Saturday Night Live, which is a popular program here in the U.S. And they uh, they said, uh, we have the first tweet from space and here it is. Uh, launch was awesome. <laughs> in 40 years, we've gone from one giant leap to, for mankind to launch was awesome. If we ever find uh, life in the universe, I assume this is how we'll be notified. And it shows my little Twitter thing. It says, geez, dudes, aliens. So that <laughs> happened on a Monday. I, 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 that was on Saturday. They made fun of my tweet. And then the next Monday, my kids, who were, I think, 13 and 15, went back to school. And, uh, you know, that, that Monday. And everyone, I guess I was the talk around school. The, day, you know, the dad got made fun of on Saturday Night Live and how cool that was. So I got some funny email from my kids saying, dad, they made fun of you on Saturday night live. All the kids loved it. So I got a little, got a little credibility amongst the kids, but, um, but I, you know, years later I was, uh, watching a, a, a program and, uh, I think it was Neil Armstrong's brother or cousin or someone was on there. Uh, it was the 50th anniversary of the moon landing now 2019 is when this happened and, and he said something about that. Neil showed him a piece of paper and 
and it said what you know what he was going to say on the moon i'm like oh man see there it is he did think about it and it, but then i saw his sons a few um like a week or so later not very much because we were doing events and i got i got to know them rick and mark really nice guys and i said hey look let me ask you guys something i saw this thing on tv about it was your uncle your cousin or so your dad's cousin or uncle's brother or something saying they go oh yeah don't pay attention to that guy he's always saying all kinds of stuff and he, and they said that uh if, if that's what dad told you that was the truth and i know I, I know that was the truth and he was all about doing his job um but he was very capable in other areas. And I think he did have a poet in him because that was very poetic what he said. And he was all about the team. The if you look at the um mission patches of all the of all the human spaceflight missions, including mine, uh, we all have our names of the crew on every patch, but there's one patch that stands out that does not have the name of the crew, and that is the Apollo eleven patch. There are no there are no names of the crew on it. It's the only one that just says Apollo eleven on it. And that was because they wanted to deflect the attention that they wanted to pay tribute to the whole team that got him there. And uh, he was all of his friends, uh, other astronauts from that era, like John Young and Jim Lovell and uh, Alan Bean, uh, guys that I re really respect and have given me a lot of great advice over the years. All of them have said when they talk about Neil Armstrong that he was the absolute right person, the perfect choice to be the first person to walk on the moon. And that was a great choice that NASA made uh, to have him do that. So I think he reiterated to me the importance of being humble and giving credit to others and uh, being very appreciative of the opportunities you have and not blowing it, you know, because we all, once we became astronauts, we were all given this great opportunity and then, well, what are you going to do with it? You know, are you going to make the most of it or are you going to feel entitled and squander it? So uh, I think that was a very, a very important group of lessons that I learned from Neil and uh, getting a chance to know him was, was just really cool. So he was a very cool guy and, and someone, and someone to be admired. Um, what an amazing story. And for what it's worth, if I got to choose what I was getting made fun of for, it would probably be something like sending the first tweet from space. So nothing, <laughs> yeah. to, nothing to worry about. Yeah, no, about. it was all right. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs>